Today on the program, we welcome Dove. Domestic violence ended here in Quincy to talk about a number of uh, events and happenings, including their Let's Dance fundraiser that's coming up very soon, uh, but also some different uh, changes to some of their programs and services, a little history of the organization as well. And to do that, we welcome for the first time to the program, Sadie Blanco. Sadie, great to meet you. Hi, great to meet you, Joe. Thank you for having me oh, here. I appreciate it. Pleasure. We've had a great uh, relationship with Dove over yes. the years. So yes. I look forward to uh, continuing that as well. Of course. Um, with you and others, but you're <laughs> relatively new, right? Yeah, I am. I have been here two and a half years now at Dove, um, but I'm the Communications and Development Associate, so I've been doing a lot of different things with Dove within other programs as well, and it's just been a wonderful time at Dove. I love it. Tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how yeah. you got here. Yeah, sure. So I'm from California, actually, um, but I went to Boston College, oh. and then I've always had a passion for nonprofit life. My mom's a social worker, so it's really within our blood. I would Literally, say. in your yeah. blood. Yeah. Okay. Um, and domestic violence is something that hits close to home for me. Um, it's something that I think a lot of people at Dove really are attached to the mission itself. So when I heard about the mission and I saw an opening, I just knew it'd be a great fit for me. So great. that's why I'm here. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, for it. folks who don't know, although Dove's been around quite a long time now, mm -hmm. uh, give us kind of a, the encapsulated version of, of what, what Dove is. Yeah. So Dove was founded in 1978. Right. It's still technically our 45th anniversary that we're celebrating. Okay. Um, and we started out as just a shelter and it really transformed into all these different programs and services so it could be community advocacy which is one-on-one -on -one counseling or being in a support group our legal advocacy program which right now centers mostly on family and immigration law um, we have some civilian domestic violence advocates who work in local police stations to really make sure first responders who are usually police on domestic violence calls can handle it in the safest and healthiest way for survivors um, we have prevention education which mm -hmm. is great initiative um, we start in sixth grade, going all through middle school, high school, local colleges, just doing presentations on what's healthy, unhealthy, and abusive relationships, and trying to prevent abuse from happening in the first place, sure. of course. And then um, we, of course, have our shelter and hotline, um, as I mentioned before. And yeah, there's a lot of different growing programs and trying to expand services so we can meet survivors' needs, essentially. Sure. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about uh, the professional staff um, at yeah. Dove and their backgrounds. Yeah. Well, I love the staff, all yeah. of them. I've gotten to know them very well, and we've had some um, new team members join us recently yes. on our legal team. So we have some new family law attorneys, and we also have new shelter staff team. Um, so it's just been really great onboarding new people so that they can see the the work that we're doing within the community and also gain so much insight from some of the uh, staff members like Kathleen Leiden, who's the Director of Community Services, or Jen Bolton, Director of Prevention Education. They've been here more than 13 years at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. So it's so wonderful to be able to kind of pass down knowledge um, in order to best serve survivors, essentially. Sure. Are there any kind of openings or glaring needs at Dove in terms yeah. of filling positions? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, right now, we actually have really built up our team good. pretty well. Um, of course, we are we have an interim executive director right. still, yeah. but that uh, hopefully we'll be starting our search soon for okay. the executive director. Okay. So um, I guess that will be the only thing That's really the coming big one, up. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the big one. Yep. But besides that, uh, we've been pretty solid as a team right good, now. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. And are there um, volunteer opportunities at all? At the Always. Really? Yes. Yeah. Um, as I'll touch on later, yeah. we're having like a shelter transformation, so some of that volunteer opportunities will change. But we always need help at our fundraisers, which I'll talk about as yes, well. Yeah. Um, and um, just sometimes we have community survivor events. So this month we're actually having a fun like wildlife event for the families to come who are currently serving. So kids can be able to see some of the zoo animals that are coming oh. in. And then it's a fun way for parents to relax, for kids yeah. to have fun and just kind of break out of those, the the trauma that you're currently going through as you're trying to heal, you know, it, with domestic violence. Sure. Is that, so where and when is that, or is that not open to the public? It's, it's not open okay. to public, okay. yeah. Okay. It's things that just, or there are events that just happen yes. within yeah. um, our community I office understand. for yeah. clients. Yeah. No, it's, you know, always sensitive about that, you know. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Issues. Thank you, yeah. yeah, thank you. Sure. So, Sadie, let's yeah. dance. Yeah. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to dance. Believe me, you do not want to see me dance. <laughs> me either, it's okay. <laughs>
<laughs> but that's uh, the name of the fundraiser that's coming yes. up, right? Yeah. Uh, it used to be Divas Dance, actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah a lot of people still know it as Divas oh, Dance. Oh, sure. Because yeah. it started in 2011. Wow. Um, okay. So we're getting to our 13th year, actually, yeah. Yeah, if I'm counting right. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, thank you. So it started out as kind of just this fun dance party for a board member, and it transformed into our spring fundraiser, because mm -hmm. we have Harvesting Hope, our fall fundraiser. Right. And this is um, just the equivalent, but in spring. So it's really a fun night where it includes a silent auction, a raffle, which is already open on our website. Okay. Um, I can talk a little bit about that if yep. you'd like. And then we have interactive games at the event, food, of course, to sustain people as they dance. <laughs> <laughs> and you can then, burn off those calories, right? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> and then um, we have our survivor speaker, which is always in a video, just because it's very hard for someone to speak in the moment, of Certainly, course. Yeah. And then we do an appeal to support survivors, as usual, because it's a fundraiser at the end of the day. Yeah. And then we have dancing. So it's just a, it's a wonderful night, 6 to 10 at Granite Links, as we said. Um, tickets are $125, and you can get a table for $1,250, which is a table of 10. Um, and it's just a, a wonderful way for our community to come together and support survivors and essentially support our programs and services so we can keep them going in a sustainable way. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, May 2nd, right? Yes, uh, May 2nd. And no, no deadline to purchase tickets? So. No deadline, okay. nope. And maybe even show up that evening? Yeah, Perhaps? some okay. people do, so oh, that's that right? okay to do, okay. yeah. <laughs> so what will they be dancing to, Sadie? Oh, well, I actually, I love music, so I pick a lot of like ABBA and fun, oh, okay. <laughs> fun dance right. music. Um, we try to keep the music light and just Oh, so it's a people. DJ? Yes, okay. yeah, there's a DJ. I didn't know if there was yeah. a band or not. Just, oh, okay. no, there's a DJ, yeah, but okay. she picks really amazing music. I love her. <laughs> okay, that sounds yeah. like fun. So yeah, let's talk a little bit more about what will be happening that evening in terms of your, yeah. your silent auction and your raffle items. Yeah. For sure, so silent auction is growing as of right now we'll okay. be opening that usually a week before the event but the raffle is and I believe we had this at Harvesting Hope last year mm -hmm. um, we talked about it is a three-night stay at the Salty Daughter in Hull it's this really amazing beach bungalow that's mm -hmm. on Nantasket Beach um, and it's just a gorgeous house it can house up to 12 people wow. so if you want to have a little party, you can. Say, yeah, party house, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it'll be wonderful for people who want to find something or find a place to be in the summer and the late fall or wherever you want to be. Um, but it's a wonderful house. And raffle tickets are starting at $10, mm. and they go up from increments there. Um, so all that information is on our website as well at okay. DoveMA.org. Okay, mm -hmm. and the winner is drawn at, at Let's at Dance? At the event, yes. Okay. Do yeah. they have to be there to win? No, you okay. don't. Great question. Yeah, yeah that's important, you don't. I know. <laughs> so, and it, so it's during season then that you get to use the house? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's exactly, nice. I was going to say yeah. if it's in January then. <laughs> yeah, someone's probably going to be like, nah, yeah, it's not, not so going to work for yeah. me. <laughs> so it's a great prize then. Exactly. It's really wonderful. And the person who donated it, Emily Coatman, she renovated the house. Oh. She was featured on the Magnolia Network, oh, and yeah. she was just recently in South Shore Magazine as well. Oh. Um, so you can see pictures of the house if you'd like online or in some of those places that I mentioned. Oh, what's the name of it again, the house? It's um, The Salty Daughter. The Salty Daughter. Yeah, okay. it's a cute name. <laughs> Sounds like fun. All right. Yeah. Uh, now the silent auction mm -hmm. is up and running. Can you talk about some of the items maybe? Yeah, so it's not open yet. Oh. It'll open up like about a week before the okay. event. But we have some golf packages yep. like at Granite Links or, um, I always say this wrong, Hopkinton Golf Club. No, there's no G in there. There's no, no. It's, it's a hard thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the marathon starts. Amy. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some golf packages. We have some like massages, salon things, um, like for haircuts, blowouts, yeah. whatever you'd like. Uh, we have some Red Sox tickets. Oh, well. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's, it's early. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of things for anyone is, is the hope, is we try to yeah. put together packages that are curated with a lot of care so that anyone who wants to do something, whether it's for yourself or even a gift for Mother's Day, which is in May, coming mm -hmm. up right after the event, you can find something that anyone would like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and is that through your website as well? So we'll open it on our website, okay. yes. Um, but mostly we hope that people will go to the event, see sure. the items even, and then be able to bid from there. Okay. And does the bidding close uh, that night of the fundraiser? Yes. It, it does. It should close at about 8.30 that okay. night. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Very good. Yeah. Do you need other items donated? Is there still time to for somebody to maybe Oh, of do course. Oh, there is. We okay. always are asking local businesses. And I love asking local businesses to, you know, our area in Quincy, mm. just because it's nice to um, help local businesses and support them. Sure. So I have a lot of items that I feature and if anyone has an idea or a business that they like and or own or want to sponsor or showcase at the event mm -hmm. please let me know and sure. okay. um, I can provide like my email or anything and 
we can go from there. Okay, yeah. that sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, about how much does the event raise uh, every year? So we have a goal of 160,000 this okay. year. Right. Um, last year it was 150,000. Okay. So we're we're hoping to try to raise more just because sure. we really um, have a lot of expanding that we're trying to do with our programs and services. There's always tricky budget cuts that happen on statewide and federal wide cuts. So we really want to try to secure the funding for our programs and services as much as we can. Absolutely. So that's our goal for this okay. year. Okay, all right. You, could, you have to aim high, right? Yep, yeah. always. <laughs> um, because uh, the state is looking at, uh, you know, kind of a yeah. lean year right now, too. So yeah. that's going to impact social service agencies like yes. Dove. Yeah. they always do. And it's, it's really, it's sad to see, but yeah. it's what happens, and we just have to be adaptable. Sure. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, part of the funding will go to your new expanded shelter program, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Let's talk about I'd that. Love What's to talk going about on? It. Yeah. So there's two pieces to the exciting news that we released two weeks ago, as mm -hmm. of now. Um, the first piece is that we're transforming our group shelter model. So that's a six bedroom, one house, shared living spaces. So a shared kitchen, shared living room, um, a shared bathroom, even, and we're transforming it into six independent apartments. So a lot of that came with um, extensive research into how has a group shelter model affected survivors that we've served mm -hmm. within our shelter, mm -hmm. um, as well as how has a group shelter model affected survivors statewide in other shelters and nationwide. And then we had lots of conversations both with INDOV, with partner organizations, and with our coalition organization, Jane Doe Inc. Mm -hmm, um, sure. Hopefully you've heard of them. And uh, it's just been a lot of different months long conversations and research. And it landed us to the conclusion that a group shelter model needed to transform into independent apartment living. So we're still sheltering people. It's just six bedrooms is now gonna be six apartments. And it really just creates exciting opportunities for survivors to be able to heal better from trauma that they're experiencing and especially if they have little kids mm -hmm. you have your own space you have autonomy to just be in your own living space so that you can thrive and hopefully transition to something more stable after okay so mm -hmm. this this really is a fundamental change for dove right yeah because it's always been a group shelter from its start yep. right? since 1978 that's how we started right. was with a shelter okay but it's always been that one house with six bedrooms and yes. the shared spaces um, and we've been able to see the the needs that survivors, our community, and staff have that uh, we need to address in order to kind of better serve everyone. Sure. Mm -hmm. So is it will it be in the same location and just do some reconstruction? No. Or no? Mm -mm. Yeah, no. Okay. So we actually already have uh, six apartments that we're going to be using. So okay. that's all. That's all set. Okay. Um, so all of the people who are within shelter right now mm -hmm. will automatically transition into apartments. I see. Yeah. And are they spread out across the area, do you know, or are they um, all combined? We or? try to keep it local, of okay. course, yeah. just because we need to for our own safety purposes. Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I can say you for know, safety reasons. You know, I understand. Reasons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, no, good question. What happens to the group shelter then? What will we use yeah. that space for? Yeah. So um, Dove Leadership is still deciding what will oh, okay. happen with that. Um, we're hoping to be able to just kind of celebrate its last days as we get to the the time when we're going to close it. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to transition to the apartments by June. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're still thinking of what to do just because it's there's lots of opportunities for mm -hmm. how could we support other programs and services potentially um, by either selling the building mm -hmm. or doing something else. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so it'll be a leadership decision. Then yeah, yep. later still on. in the works. Sure. Um, I forgot to mention yes. the second part of the exciting yes. news is because of the transformation, yeah. we can reallocate our staff, so our advocates to now launch this new program. It's the Housing and Economic Empowerment Program. Okay. So um, a lot of times survivors in shelter, they're staying for about 11 months. Okay. And that's because of, as you probably know, our world has changed since 1978. And there's a lot of difficulty finding stabilized, secure housing. So applications for housing assistance um, through the state, they just take a long time. It's really hard to apply, to have eligibility, all of the different parameters. So this Housing and Economic Empowerment Program mm -hmm. is gonna allow staff to talk to more survivors and help them through that process. 
um, which is a huge need right now because people struggle with being able to be eligible or find benefits or housing assistance in general. So it's going to be an exciting opportunity to also address another big problem that right now in our current moment in time. Yeah, well, what we're seeing it manifest itself in the uh, the immigrant crisis. Yes, you know, exactly. Right Very now. local right now to Quincy. Right, yep. so that's putting an additional strain on the system that yep. was already strained to yes. begin with. Yeah, exactly. Good point. So, so how will, how do how will it actually work? Will each family have kind of their own advocate, I guess, if you will, or, or, or uh, that assistant? The um, survivors within the apartments? Yes. Oh, yeah, so we have, okay. I mean, they already have an advocate themselves, yeah. Yeah. but uh, they'll still have someone who's going to be there for their day-to-day -day needs, because we still, as an organization, need to provide for essential needs, like sure. yeah. toilet paper, paper towels, pots and pans. Think of what you use every day, right? Yeah. Exactly, okay. and yeah. it really adds up in a month, especially if you're a parent with a couple different kids in the house, maybe, right. different ages. Yep. a lot of babies, a lot of teenagers, mm -hmm. so we need to be able to provide for them still day to day. Okay, so the Housing and Economic Assistance Program, mm -hmm. how, how will it actually facilitate, you know, getting out of shelter and into yeah. permanent housing? Yeah. So it's not only going to allow for our current advocates who are working within shelter mm -hmm. to solely focus just on that housing portion, the, the transition of housing, but it also allows for survivors who are calling our hotlines, because we get a lot of calls about this in the day, um, to be able to talk to them and to say, actually, let me also help you with starting this application, okay. with following through with you. Because okay. um, right now we're having just difficulty being able to serve as many people as we can because housing stuff is just so complicated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, when you have a group shelter your attention is really limited in the ways that you can try to serve so many different people yeah. as well as six families all in one place. Well, sure. So it's hard. It's like <laughs> one teacher trying to teach exactly. you know, 35 kids in a classroom, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You have to just understand how to help those in the situation teachers, but in our situation advocates, sure. to um, be able to meet those needs. So just trying to take care of them so they can take care of others. Right, one, mm -hmm. one on one, right? Exactly. On a one on one basis, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm assuming you try and keep them housed in the local area if, if this is where their of connections course. are? Yeah. yeah, of course. Okay. Um, it's really hard with relocation. Sure. We try to not put more trauma on someone as they're already experiencing. Right. Um, but we also have to prioritize safety. Of and course, sometimes yeah. it's necessary and yeah. that's why it's great working with partner organizations because we can talk to them and try to figure out um, solutions if we're really in a difficult situation. Right, right. But yeah. I, having somebody like, you know, through Dove to advocate mm -hmm. for them through the process must be a huge it's burden lifting for helpful, them. It's very helpful, yeah. 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 Um, yeah the paperwork alone must be uh, astronomical. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's so hard doing any of this process by yourself, sure. which is why we're here in the first place. Right. It's yeah. hard to, to say out loud that you've experienced abuse and then it's hard to then be able to want to get the services you need um, and to also think of if you have kids, mm -hmm. that's a whole other different mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. as well of you're not just trying to take care of yourself, you're also trying to find safety for kids. Yeah, and trying to keep things yeah. as normal as possible for the children, exactly. right? Exactly, You know, yeah. they have a routine, uh, you know, regular yep. uh, daily activities that they yeah. can depend on, right? Yeah, you just know. trying to find stability. Yeah. That's our goal with yeah. all the services that we provide. Yeah. Yeah. So are you bringing on like additional specialists to help with this new program? No, so yeah. that's why um, I was talking about like we could reallocate our advocates yeah. from like the resources that they are yeah. to not just be solely on like the shelter and thinking okay. about what they need to do there but now they can work within our community office, mm -hmm. join our, our team there, and be able to help so many other more people by just answering questions, starting an application, yeah. whatever they need. Super, yeah. very good. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned some of the uh, different daily items. Uh, here's a good chance for you to put it oh, out there. Oh yeah, like donation donations? needs? Yeah. Oh, of course. Sure. We actually are in need of a lot right now oh, because people for have it, been Sadie. taking yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, so we're always in need of paper towels, toilet paper, okay. um, just like body care essentials, so that could be uh, body wash or soap, toothpaste, toothbrushes, yep. um, a lot of shampoo and conditioner, yep. even like hair curling products because you know we want to be able to meet needs of anyone who's coming to um, to to Dove for services. Course, yeah. So we want to make sure we're thinking of anyone and. I like to also always say we need new items. <laughs> Used items are very difficult for us to be able to get. Well, especially personal hygiene items. And, exactly, yeah, yeah. and we also are trying to really advocate for autonomy of people mm -hmm. and them being able to choose to have a new item is 
something that's so much more important than just getting a used item yes. that's not going to be as helpful. Right. Um, so those, those are always difficult things to be thinking about, but um, it's important for us to be able to do that. Okay. So that's, I think, mostly what we need right now is okay. mostly just like self-care items, okay. essentially. And how do folks all. make that donation? How does that yes, happen? Yes, great yeah. question. So you can email me at okay. cd.blanco at devma.org. Um, you can go online and my contact information's there as well, okay. or you can just email us um, like the general email that we oh, have. Okay, and you yeah. can arrange a pickup. Yep, yeah, it all goes through me. So all goes through. All right. <laughs> I'll help with so it. So we've got I the right person here to tell yeah. us about this. <laughs> okay. I got it. No worries. Super. Excellent. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and there's no deadline for that, right? That's ongoing. oh yeah, never. Yeah. No, we always are taking in kind donations. They're always super appreciated, um, and they're very much used. Sure. They go out very quickly within our organization. Yep. Now, uh, as you know. Quincy in the area is very multi-ethnic. Are you able to yeah. accommodate the needs of uh, folks from different backgrounds? Of course, yeah. that's and within our, oh sorry, go ahead. And communication too is, is an issue, language barriers, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes, that's a very good point. Um, so we have services within our community advocacy umbrella that we are really trying to address what do what are our local needs. Mm -hmm. So um, Mu Ling, who is our uh, Chinese advocacy specialist, she actually centers around really helping a lot of um, Chinese immigrants mm -hmm. who are in the area. Um, especially local to Quincy sure. because there is that language barrier as you said and we also try to do um, that's kind of identity focused services is okay. what we call them okay. so we also have an LGBTQ advocate who works within Dove um, who's helping with the gender and sexuality aspect of what kind of abuse is different what are the abusive behaviors or tactics that could be different when you are LGBTQ identifying because um, statistically it's I'm sure you've heard this before one in four women, um, one in seven men, and one in three LGBTQ identifying people experience physical abuse, and mm -hmm. that's just physical. Yep. There's so many different types of abuse beyond physical. There's emotional, financial is a big one, yep. um, digital. There can be yep. so many things. Um, so we really try to make sure that we're meeting the needs of people, especially in our area right now. What are the the things that we are looking at, mm -hmm. the common factors, where it's part of someone's identity and we need to make sure that we're addressing that and have services for them. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great question. Sure. Um, <laughs> so to recap, back to yeah. the fun stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's Dance, yeah. uh, May 2nd, Granite yep. Lakes, right? Yes, Granite Lakes, yep. 6 to 10. Uh, there's free parking, $125 a ticket, and I really hope we can see as many people there because it's a super fun event. I love it so much, and it's just great to support Dove and see other people in the community who also do. Yeah. Yeah. We should mention, um, before we close, uh, mm -hmm. the passing of uh, former Congressman uh, William Delahunt, who yes. was a staunch advocate and really helped to uh, launch Dove yes. many, many years ago, right? Yeah, so as I also mentioned, you know, I'm fairly new to Dove. So sure. when I heard that um, William Delahunt had passed away, I was curious to know who he was. And luckily, some of my staff members have been with Dove long enough that they knew of his huge legacy and helping to really found um, or like sustain our shelter to provide us the first grant funding mm -hmm. for our shelter, yep. which is a big thing. So you can go actually to our YouTube and there's a 40th anniversary video that we have and he's featured in it where he talks about um, his time as a district attorney right. and seeing that there was so much uh, domestic violence happening in the community and needing to address it. And his support of Dove was a huge factor in the way that we have been able to grow mm -hmm. and be who we are today. So his legacy is definitely felt throughout the services that we're continuing, and we're so grateful for, for him and everything that he did for us. Sure. Yeah. Anything else we should let folks know about, Sadie? I think that's, that's it. it right but now? I really appreciate you asking all these questions. They were so, great. So we're <laughs> happy to have you, and Thank please, you. Uh, please come back. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And thanks for watching us here at AM Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. We will see you next time.